Hello friends, today we will see how the eight queens can be placed on a chessboard using the algorithm and the data structures of backtracking. First of all, what is backtracking? Backtracking is nothing but if I have a solution which needs to be redefined at one particular stage, then I need to reconsider the previous decision that is taken. That is, I don't have a considerate amount of options available to me so that I can make a perfect choice. The options which are available are many and I have to choose the best one out of it. When I choose on our presumptions the best option and it leads to further more questions and if those questions that we have taken or those choices that we have made don't lead us to the best possible solution then we backtrack our choices that is how the backtracking works now here we'll consider few examples of where the backtracking can be implemented and the first of the backtracking examples can be eight queens as we consider or a maze game problem where i have to reach out at a particular successful position in a game of maze now backtracking maze is a very simple example of a situation where i have to make a choice now backtracking is a technique to solve a problem with a large search space by systematically trying and eliminating the possibilities so we do backtracking where we know that in a systematic manner i can get a possible solution and if that solution of choices is not perfect it leads to failure then we retract them so that we get a successful output so a standard example of backtracking would be going through a maze at some point of maze you might have two options whether i can go in the direction of left or right now in this which direction i have to go so for the game of maze here i have two options this is a junction at a maze as i enter and to this junction if as you see i will enter at a position here and to this position i will have to find out at which location i can go either i can go straight or i can go down so I can either have a portion A where I can go or I can have a portion B where I can go. So at that junction when I enter the maze, I need to find a solution. Whether going to a portion A is a correct answer or going to a portion B is a correct solution. So the choice has to be made. Once we make the choice at this particular junction, it will lead us to many more questions and to many more choices. Now what we see next is if I keep this over here and if I switch a little on option A, portion A or portion B, one strategy would be to try going through portion A of the maze. If we get stuck before you find your way, we then backtrack to this particular junction. So the point of backtracking for us will be this particular junction from where we separated out into two options that is portion a and portion b now what happens next at this point in time where you know that portion a will not lead you out of the maze then what do you do you come back to this junction and from this junction we then have to start searching in portion b so somewhere in portion b we'll find a solution where it will lead us out of the maze game so clearly at one particular junction in the maze what will happen here at this junction we had two options that is i can either go to portion a or i can go to portion b but there can be a junction where i can have three options now what should we do then as you see over here when i lead to this junction i have three options i can go to a I can go to B and I can even go to C. So what has happened? When I reach this particular junction, my choices have increased. Now, after reaching this junction, we considered that till this point in my junction, whatever I have traversed is a correct option. Now, what happens after this? 
I have to choose one of it from A, B and C. So the backtracking strategy says to try each choice one after another. Whether if I go from A, whether it will lead me out of the maze or if I go to B, will it lead me out of the maze? If not, then I have to come back to the junction so that it takes me out of the maze. So what happens? Like a small child, we play with a paper and a pencil to try our way path out out of the maze. Same way, we have to design an algorithm which will be a recursive algorithm so that we can find our paths out of the maze. So backtracking here will help us getting out of the maze algorithm so that whenever we need to retract, we need to have a point of retraction. So junction are the points where we need to retract ourselves. So what happens if you get stuck, backtrack to the junction and try the next choice. That is what we explained that if you cannot get out of the maze from point A, then we backtrack to the junction, we try point B. If we're not able to get out from B, then we backtrack to junction again and we get out at C. So this is how my backtracking will work. So at this junction, when A, B, C are there, and then I get, and if you try all the choices and never found a way out, then there is no solution to that particular maze. So what happens is, there is something which went wrong in which you made a choice at a previous junction. So either you can backtrack the whole thing or even if backtracking the whole thing does not lead you out of the maze, then there is actually some problem to this particular solution of the maze. So we can say that the solution to this particular maze problem does not exist. So which means that the real world problem that we took need to have some additional requirements for us to give a real world solution to be out of maze. Maybe while designing, the person designer forgot to give a particular path to reach us out of the maze. So this is how the backtracking maze is going to work. Now let's take a example of backtracking queen. Now backtracking eight queens is a simple example where I need to place eight queens on a chessboard of the size 8 by 8 that is in the 64 pieces of my chessboard I need to place 8 queens and all those 8 queens should be placed in such a manner that one queen does not cut the path of the other queen as we all know the queens have a capacity or the capability to move throughout the board they can move straight they can move horizontal they can move across so we need to place the eight queens on the chessboard in such a manner that they do not cut the paths of each other. So the backtracking plays a very, very essential and important role in the backtracking in placing the eight queens. Find an arrangement for eight queens on a single chessboard such that no two queens are attacking each other or crossing each other's path. Now, this is one arrangement that can be seen for eight queens to be placed on a chessboard where the each queen does not cut the path of the other queen. So that means one queen does not attack the other queen as queens we said has a capacity to move in all the four directions. So how do we do it? In chess, queen can move in all the way down any row, column or diagonal so long as no pieces are on the way. Due to the first restrictions, it's clear that each row and each column on the board will have exactly one queen. If I take this as my board and if I see if I place this on my board, then what happens is this queen is in row 1, column 1 and it does not cross each other's path. So what do we do? The backtracking strategy is as follows. Place the queen on the first available square of the row one. When I place the queen represented by Q on the first square of the row one. Move into the next row, placing a queen 
on the first available square such that it does not conflict with the previous placed queen. That is, when I place the second queen, then as we said that the queens can move in all the four directions, that is row wise, column wise and the diagonal wise. So what happens when I place the next queen, it should not attack the previous queen. So I place the second queen in this particular location. Now again, when I consider this, I have to place my third queen. So third queen is placed in such a manner that again, it does not attack the first and the second queen. So we place the fourth queen. And then in this way, the four queens are placed but when we consider placing the fifth queen it can also be placed but when I consider placing a sixth queen it becomes little difficult as all the parts are covered by my previous queens when I place my fifth queen what happens is when I say I place my fifth queen over here then what happens I cannot place my any other queens further so if I cannot place my any other queens further I have to start backtracking so I change the position of my fifth queen from this location to the last one and then we continue backtracking so that there are no more conflicts continue in this fashion until we solve the problem or if we get stuck then we have to backtrack when you get struck, remove the queen and go at to a place where you got you and until you get a row where there is another valid square to try. So I place it here, the second queen is placed over here, the third queen is placed, the fourth queen is placed and the fifth queen and then I change its location. So this will continue in the backtracking manner so that I can get a perfect solution. And then what happens next? When we carry out the backtracking, an easy way to visualize what is going on in the tree that shows all the different possibilities that have been tried. Now this is a possibility which is going to happen for backtracking a four queen. That is, on a four by four chessboard, I need to place four queens on the table. On the board, we will show a visual representation of solving four queens problem that is placing four queens on a four by four row or a four by four board where no two attack each other. So what happens? The neat thing about coding a backtracking is that it can be done recursively without having to do all the bookkeeping at once. So what we do, we will keep track of all the things that we've been doing so that I can place all the eight queens or four queens at a proper place on my chessboard. Instead, the start or the recursive calls does most of the bookkeeping work. And this recursion will lead to a systematic behavior. Keeping track of which queen we have placed and which combinations we have done. So in the recursion, in the stack, all the spaces, all the data structures will be stored so that it can leave us to a dynamic issue. Now, this is a simple code which can be solved for a eight queens problem. As we've seen that backtracking will help us with the recursive calls for stacks and it will help us give us a proper solution to our problem. So what we do next, we have to implement this into a programming code. To implement the eight queens programming code, we will start with a simple solve it recording or solve it where we keep the track of all the queens. It's a simple program where we can keep track of how my particular program of placing the eight queen works. Now first we have these arrays and its explanation. We have a PERM array which stores a valid permutation of queens from index zero to location minus one. As we're starting the array with zero, it is an eight by eight matrix where my queens are saved. As we are starting from zero, so it will be from zero to seven and not zero to eight. 
If we say 0 to 8, then my matrix is becoming of the size 9 by 9. So we take it location minus 1. If my location is 3, then it should be 2 because I'm starting my array size from 0. Location is the column where we're placing the next queen. And used list is keeps track of the rows in which the queens are already are the place where queens are already being placed. So these three are the major arrays that we're going to use to implement the eight queens problem or placing of eight queens using backtracking and recursion. Now here are the simple program or the simple code statement which I'll be explaining word to word. Now if location is equal to size that is if I found a solution to the problem I print that particular thing. Then look through the possible rows to place this particular queen. I have to continuously go into the loop to place the particular queen and if I find a solution then I place it and then only try this row if it has not been used. That is if the used list has got a value false then only I have to go into this particular loop. If it has been used then I will not enter into this loop as I've declared above that use list keeps track of the rows in which the queens are already being placed. If the queens are already being placed then those particular rows and columns will have a status of true. So if that particular used list i of that particular row and column has a status as false then only we will enter into this particular if loop and check if this position conflicts with any other previous queen in the diagonal. So the first one if you see it is it will loop through to place the possible queens and if that particular thing is free if that row is not being used if the statement is false then only I enter otherwise we backtrack it to this particular function so that I can go into it again and again and check if the position does not have a conflict then only I go to place it I mark the queen in this row and mark the row as used solve the next column location recursively and unmark the rows are used so we can get all possible valid solution if you see in this particular loop where I enter for all the permutations and combinations of placing my eight queens if I have found a valid position to place this queen I will mark that particular row I'll place the queen and I'll mark the particular row and I'll also mark that particular row as used because once the queen has been placed in that row I cannot place another queen into it. So what I do? I can place it in the same row. Another queen cannot be placed so I'll mark that whole row as a used one. Also the column it has been placed will be marked as used and also the diagonals and we solve the next column solution recursively so that I can place my next queen. If there is a conflict which is happening, then I'll unmark the, unmark the row which has been used. Another common puzzle that can be solved with backtracking is known as a Sudoku puzzle. Sudoku is placing of numbers where no conflict happens when I have a maze which have nine Sudoku puzzles and where the same number does not get repeated in the same row and the same column. So Sudoku puzzle also works on the backtracking technique. So what happens is the basic idea behind the solution is as follows. I scan the board to look for an empty square that can take the fewest possible values based on the simple game constraint. The game constraint says that in a 3 by 3 matrix I can place the numbers from 1 to 9 and in the same row or the same column of three sudoku puzzles one in one row and one column then i cannot have the same number which gets repeated so i have to have these game constraints in mind so that i can keep track of the sudoku game if you find a square that can only be one possible value fill it with that one value and continue in the algorithm so this sudoku puzzle will also follow the backtracking solution
If we cannot find a possible solution, then we backtrack, else we place the original value and continue the algorithm. Then, if no such square exists, place one of the possible numbers for that square in that number and we repeat the process. So, what happens next is the game of Sudoku. We keep trying the backtracking process till we find or we are able to place all the numbers on the Sudoku board. So, the Sudoku board will be filled with the numbers where they do not clash with each other using the formalities or using the fundamental logic behind the Sudoku puzzle. And if you ever get stuck, erase the last number placed and see if there are any other possible choices for that slot and try those next. So for the game of maze, as we have the junctions to which we backtrack for those particular points, in the game of Sudoku, we backtrack the numbers. Either we erase those numbers that we have placed for that particular game or we also backtrack into the start of the game. As in the puzzle of Sudoku, it is never a dead end. It will always lead us to a proper real world solution. So the Sudoku game will never be a dead end game. We can always erase all the numbers and then start with initial placing of the numbers again. A final example of something that can be solved using backtracking, what we saw is maze. So maze and backtracking are important for solving any problem. From your start point, you will iterate through each possible starting move. Why we say it is a final example? Because after seeing the maze problem from the initial to eight queens and to the Sudoku solving, we have seen that how important it is for us to do the backtracking. Backtracking always leads us to a possible solution where we can get a real world output. And this real world output in the backtracking will always help us. So from the start point, you will iterate through each possible starting move. And from here, you will recursively move forward. And when I recursively move forward, then what happens? I will get a perfect solution. If you ever get stuck, then the recursion takes you back to wherever you were and you try the next possible move. So this maze and backtracking will always be solved so that we can get to a solution which is perfect and it is in the end a successful solution. Now what we see is in dealing with maze, we make sure that we don't type too many possibilities. We have to make sure that when we go out with the perception of designing an algorithm that our first choice will lead us to a possible solution which may not be possible in all the conditions but that will be possible if we try to do it perfectly and when we try to do it perfectly then it is possible for us to give a perfect solution and one should make a mark of all the locations in the maze that have been visited already so that no location on the maze gets revisited twice. So we can have the junction which needs to be stored and for that junction we need to track our solutions. If the place is already being visited then there's no point of trying to reach the end of the maze and there again and again. As we know that particular junction is not going to lead us to a perfect problem. So this is how we conclude that maze solution gives us the perfect backtracking problem. Thank you.